needless to say, that it could be consistent with a comprehensive demand reduction strategy. So we're not just looking at a harm reduction, we're looking at a demand reduction strategy, which is, 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 which is currently in our drug, national drug strategy. Any such approach should also require counseling and other health and welfare services aimed at promoting healthier lifestyles and adventure absence. <coughs> and this is coming, this is coming from, this is coming from the, um, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is from the UN legal, society, uh, legal department. David Cameron in 2002 voted in favour of supervised injection facility rooms to be launched in the UK. He's now back paddling quite you know, significantly. But you know, he could see the need, you know, when this when all this was being discussed. So if we look at the evaluation, we look at the evidence. So you've got KPMG, which are a renowned um, you know, you know, a renowned auditors, and it states this is this is for the this is for the Australian um, supervised injection facility. It says forty percent of the clients referred to MISCs to addiction treatment services had never previously accessed treatment for their drug addiction. Regular interaction with healthcare service over time can increase the likelihood that a client will seek help for their drug use. And the MISC data shows that while all clients are off, off, um, often sorry. Offer referral and assistance to the proportion of those clients who accept the referral increases dramatically um, increase, the, increase dramatically the more visits they have made. So the more visits, the more engagement you're working with the person, that's the whole area, that's the whole principle of harm reduction. And but the more engagement you have with an individual, the more likely they are to gain trust and to, and to move when they're ready. Okay, from KPMG, um, since coming here to the MISC has helped me get in contact with the services, um, as 82% of people have said that. They've also said that it gets help with um, other issues such as accessing services and housing and legal services. As the majority of service clients report they have access to non alcohol and um, other drug services since they've used the MISC. So you can, see the, you can see how significant these services are to these individuals. You're talking about thousands of people going through these services on a yearly basis. Okay, so the evidence again, um, you've got the, the uh, reduced overdose deaths, you've got the research from that. You've also got the Vancouver Medical and Supervised Injection Facility, which was conducted by the Vancouver Health, Coastal Health, which would be like the, the, the National Health Board and such you know, in respects. And they've also, um, they're also supporting people from some of the universities. And if you click on all these later on, you'll actually be taken directly to the documents if you want, if you want to look at the later on. So again, from Insight, people using Insight are more likely to enter withdrawal management detox programs than any than injecting drug users who don't use a facility. So people who don't, who can't use these facilities to inject and work with these people are less likely to uh, go, into, go into detox. The likelihood of entering detox goes up even further if the person uses Insight weekly and then speaks to an addiction counselor. So it's not just people having, you know, we've got this perception of these rooms going, people going, you know, having, having their hits and sitting down, tea and coffee, and that's it, there's nothing else, and they're happy days. But it's more than that. It's a lot more than that. You know, you have, faith, you have, you know, you have pharmacists, you have GPs, you have addiction counselors. And there's a, there's a, more like, there's a, there's a, there's a continuum of care approach. And if they want to go to detox, they go to detox. And if they want to go into treatment later on, they can go into treatment later on. Um, a lot of people think, well, if I'm going to have a safe injection facility in my area, I'm going to be attracting a lot of people. But it also shows that the patterns of drug use in the community did not worsen as a result of this insight, and crimes related to the drug use have not increased. Insight and Pete and the guys in, in, in Sydney have a very good reputation, have a very good rapport with, with their, the local sort of law enforcement people. You know, if they want to walk around the area, they'll actually walk around the area. You know, sort of, if they want, you know, if their deed is hanging about, you know, they have that agreement. But there's also the, the fact that it's really important that the people who actually enter these services, feel they're entering, able to enter these services safely, and that they um, know they're not going to be judged. But they all also feel ownership. You know yourselves, you feel ownership of something, you know, you, it makes it more easy, you, you don't hang up, you know, you don't, 
be followed by the rules of the organisation, you know, if, if you feel that ownership. Um, and also, which is really significant, the, the reduction of the number of people who openly inject on the streets and the amount of injecting, um, injecting so related data that was left behind. So there was a huge reduction in on that as well. So the evidence is the facts that medical supervisors in protective um, centres <coughs> save lives, they do not attract uh, drug users into the area, they provide a gateway to drug treatment counselling, the local res residents support uh, medical supervisors in injected centres, they reduce the problems of public injecting and discarding needles, they decrease the number of drug, drug uh, overdose deaths and reduce the risk spread of uh, diseases such as HIV and hepatitis C. Think how much money that service is saving from a financial base. How much, how much that's something like that is saving the local economy? Because you're not having people on the streets, you know, like, you know, you know like we see them all the time in you know, this country. You know, if you see, you know, if not, we, we, we see people, not just necessarily homeless people, but we do see people injected on the streets. And it's becoming, and it's becoming more and more problematic, you know, especially in the last six to eight months. Okay, so this is again. This is this isn't really new. I mean, Merchants Key had the first uh, had the conference in um, on med medical supervised injected centres in two thousand two. The Minister of Justice, if I'm right, in two thousand three was Michael McDowell, and he said controlled injection rooms might be an idea because if, if I because I know it has been suggested. The question you have to ask yourselves is: it good enough to give, simply give needles to exchange needles, new needles, uh, exchange new needles? Um, the, the spread of hate, sorry, the stuff, the spread of AIDS, but at the same time giving them some some of the facilities. What do you expect people to do? People to, uh, who do not, sorry, who people to use to do? And then in the same, literally in the same kind of in the, in the interview, he sort of backtracked because I think he realised how people, you know, what he said and how politically it's time to be politically it's very sensitive. Is, and he goes on, I will be very loath to have an official injecting rooms. I don't think it's a good idea, it's not, it's not indictable, it's an indictable offence to have heroin. I'm not going down the same road of providing places for see people to shoot up heroin. And that was in 2003, so this isn't kind of a new, this isn't super injected facilities. The discussion that's happening in Ireland isn't new. Okay, so I'm just going to play a three, three minute video. Um, about two and a half, three minutes, and basically what it is, it's a series of photographs I've taken in the last well, six months um, in various areas. Um, I suppose it, you know, in relation to sort of
a sudden shot at it, and, you know, when I took it, to go around various areas, I was taking these photographs, and you can see that the instantly in the hygienic conditions, a lot of these people do reject it. Um, that, that, that's a picture of the blue light was actually taken in the toilet in Dublin. And the whole idea is that people don't see their veins quite <coughs> um, very human and humane way of dealing with it. It's actually what actually ha what happens is they can't see their veins that go into their groin. Um, and then you, you, it, regularly if you go into these toys with the blue light, you will see sort of blood on the floor when they kind of either miss the vein or they so you know, it's not really dealing with the problem. It's not really dealing with the issue. However, for the, I suppose for the for the for the business people, you know, in, in those areas where there is significant you know, drug use go, drug use going on, you can understand from the business perspective as well because they don't want to be going out. They don't want to go into the area. You know, every every Friday, you know, because they're picking up, picking up this guy from needles. So again. Um, this, is a, this is very, very recent data. This is very recent data. Um, you can see the you can see the 77 percent of people are people with, with currently estimated to have Hep C in this country or infected drug users, which is a significant amount of people. Um, you know, I think again, Hep C is kind of being put on us. But in theory, I suppose it, you know, in not just this country, but other countries really sort of. Sort of HIV is more, I suppose, it's deemed to be more, um, more, more of an issue, and so the Hep C is coming, coming through. And obviously, we've got co infected people as well with Hep C and HIV as well. So, there's another couple kind of water individuals. So, I suppose, where, where are we today, you know, in 2012? Um, myself and uh, Dr. Clay, Mary Claire Van Hout, we were commissioned to do some research around in Dublin. Around Dublin at the beginning of the year, what, 2000, um, 2000, end of 2011, going into 2012, we were commissioned by um, the Business and Development Community in, in Dublin to uh, undertake a, a sort of rapid assessment of research of drug and alcohol, alcohol related public nuisance in, in Dublin city centre. Unfortunately, that actual piece of research, meeting piece of research, is still under embargo. Um, but, but what actually came out of that was an executive, was an executive summary um, called the Better City for All, and it was a partnership approach. I suppose it was, it, it, it was a partnership approach between the business people, between the drug, the, the, the agencies that you know work with um, drug users, uh, the Guardi, the business people. So it was it was an all round strategic approach, and it worked. In fairness, it worked really really well, and it was a good partnership. But out of that, which is really significant, is that from this piece of research, and it's been, um, it's been told to me by various other people, this is actually happening on the street with the policing. It's actually how it's started, this was the policing started to change a small bit, where the issue of substance-related antisocial behaviour is, is primarily a public health issue. And as I say, long-term solution can be only delivered in that context. So what they're saying is not criminal justice, it's whether it's a criminal justice issue, you know, for some people, it's now a primary a public health issue. And I think to have that in a document that's been signed off by business people, by drug agencies, and by the Guardian, I think is quite is, is a significant step in the, in, in, in the right direction. In that report as well, it states the establishment of medically supervised injecting facilities. It states that in the document. Okay, so the Lord, Lord Mayor's antisocial, antisocial um, who was the previous Lord Mayor, uh, Andrew Montague, said in, in this statement, again, for the, backed by himself, supporting the says that they support this in the establishment of pilot medically supplement supervised injection centres to enable the gathering of evidence on the effectiveness of the initiative to reduce the harm for users engaged, um, engaged in risk behaviour. He said the HSE or someone else should run that. However, I do disagree that it should be a pilot. There's no need for having pilots because there's evidence. There's plenty much to show you a small snippet of evidence tonight. There's absolutely no need to have a pilot. They work. You've got a complete, what I think is really interesting, you've got the same model being uh, 
implemented in, in Vancouver, and you've got the same model being implemented in Australia. Both, um, both models are coming back and saying exactly the same thing. The evaluations and results and the service users are coming back and saying the same thing time and time and time again. So we don't need a pilot. And then, a week ago, um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a door question to the minister, and it says, no, it's not my intention to introduce supervised objective sites for heroin users, and it's rather my focus is on ensuring that there is increased emphasis on providing the opportunity for people to move from illicit drug use through the drug treatment, rehabilitation, and for a drug-free lifestyle where that's achievable. Hello. <laughs> Drug consumption rooms, supervised injection facilities, that's exactly what they're doing. And then goes on. A 2012 report for the, uh, from the EMCDA indicates that heroin assisted treatment is made for, available for small. We're not talking about heroin assisted treatment, we're talking about supervised injection facilities. They're two completely different models of intervention. I'm not going to go down the heroin assisted treatment tonight because that's, you know, that's for another night. But they're two completely different interventions. So the evidence speaks the unit. The evidence speaks for itself. This ensuring that there's increased emphasis on providing the opportunities for people to move from illicit drug use through the drug treatment and rehabilitation to a drug-free lifestyle where that's achievable. It's there. The models work. People want to implement these models. People want to implement supervised city. And it's not just in Dublin over here now, but here in, in, in other areas. So, providing safe injective facilities should be viewed as a treatment option for people. To provide the opportunities for people to move from illicit drug use through the drug treatment and rehabilitation to a drug-free life, uh, life where well, that's achievable. So it's a treatment option. It's a bit like you know, we could, you know, people go into the hospital and you know they, you know they, 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 you know they need services. These safe injection facilities work. They provide an extremely necessary service, and they work. I can't say clearly that really. Um, so all the pieces, all the pieces of jigsaw come together. For me, it's a no-brainer. And when people say, you know, the MCDA says this and the MCDA, put the MCDA, and there's loads of evidence here from the MCDA to say that drug consumption rooms work. There's, you know, there's, as we've seen tonight, there's, you know, there's um, evidence from Vancouver and, and, from, and from Sydney and from various other, other, other places that these work. It's a very, very easy implementable model to put in. Um, just two books I kind of recommend. Um, there's a new book I didn't even know it was out until the other day, so we put it on Facebook. Um, basically, it's it 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 talking about um, it was in Vancouver how the sort of social action came into came to force and brought, brought on people brought insight into, into what it is today. And another very very good book uh, by uh, Van Beck, and it's actually her story of how. She, was her story of how she actually went through and what they, what they went through to um, set up these you know, Sydney Medical Supervised Injection Facilities. It's a very good book. Again, if you just click on any of those two articles when you want to download it, you can um, take you know, take to, take directly to the website. Um, that's me. Okay, that's bits and pieces. Um, I've got, I was a bit geeky, I'm afraid. Um, it's a QR code, and everyone really a QR code. Basically, QR code. Have you got a little scanner on your a barcode scanner on your phone? If you've got an iPhone or Android, whatever. You can scan that, and they'll actually download. You can actually scan that, and you can actually download the presentation directly on the website. It's on the website, is it? Sorry. It's on the website, is it? It will be on the website. Yeah. This isn't uploaded yet. Yeah. 